Hello and welcome to TAPSA Explainers. My name is Johannes Pollack and I'm Professor of Political Science and Rector of Webster Vienna Private University. Today in this video I will talk about the latest issue in our TAPSA book series, News from the Capitals. The explicit objective of this series is to get a quick, competent and comprehensive 360 degree view on pressing European issues. The latest book on Russia and the future of Europe got a new importance due to the tragic events unfolding in Ukraine. The blatant violation of international law, the incomprehensible human suffering in the middle of Europe. No one of us could have imagined that when we conceptualized this book. Hegel's All of Minerva only flies at dusk, meaning that with hindsight, we the editors, our colleagues contributing to the book, and you will read it in a context no one of us imagined only a few weeks ago. Our plan was to provide a guidebook through the political landscape of the Union's member states and beyond. How do experts assess as member states their position towards Russia? How do different actors within the member state define the role towards Russia? 41 short opinionated contributions allow to better understand the national differences in the position towards Russia. What this look reveals is an astonishing kaleidoscope of positions and at the same time certain threads that unite and divide Europe over the Russian topic. Most certainly it shows that in too many areas there's still no unified European position, despite the efforts of many to formulate one. The EU's policy towards Russia, one is tempted to say by necessity, is the smallest common denominator between the member states. It goes without saying that the Russian aggression towards Ukraine will change this. Moreover, since this book also assembles contributions from non-European states, the political, historical and also cultural divisions, often nurtured by short-sighted, one-sided economic interests, become more visible. Overall, a highly critical disposition towards Russia can be discerned. Mind you, all this was described before anyone could foresee the extent of the tragedy unfolding in February 2022. The critical position of most member states can be rooted in the specific historical experience. Think of Estonia or Bulgaria. In more recent political events, such as the ammunition warehouse explosion in 2014 in the Czech Republic, or the war of 2008 in Georgia, or in a generally negative perception by the public. The latter is the case in a large number of countries, Albania, Belgium, Estonia, France, Kosovo, Sweden, the Netherlands and so on and so forth. Then there are countries where we can find a negative attitude of the public but friendly overtures of the governments. In Austria, public sentiments may be rather neutral, nowadays I'm pretty sure negative, towards Russia, but at the same time doubts about the effects of sanctions, distorted historical experiences, economic interests and the limited willingness to accept negative side effects for oneself are ubiquitous. There are also countries where the perception of Russia is a kind of a mixed bag, either depending on the age group, as in Romania, where the elder citizens are more negative than the younger ones, or Poland, where one seems to appreciate Russian culture, but is clearly opposed to the current Russian regime. In Germany, one also has to add the East-West divide, whereas in Bulgaria, a historically fueled negative perception is slowly turning due to a massive interference by Russian proxies and economic investment to create positive reports about Russia and its policies in the media. Countries that show a positive attitude towards Russia are Greece and Iceland, where citizens see the United States as the bigger threat for the international order, or Italy, where we find historical remnants of a strong Communist Party and strong economic ties. I'm not growing tired of emphasizing that those were positions formulated before the Russian aggression in the Ukraine. For some countries, astonishingly, Russia is, or rather was, not high on the agenda at all. Albania, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Ireland, 
Liechtenstein, North Macedonia, Portugal, Switzerland. Russia is warm topic amongst others, but certainly not the most important one. If there's one point we as editors want to convey, it is the call you read all over in the contributions, the need for a comprehensive European strategy towards Russia. Such a strategy needs to include a clear plan of how to put deeds behind words. It needs a plan of how to counter Russian propaganda efforts in the Balkans, how to develop a credible standing in world politics as Western liberal democracies. The rather sweet saying that Europe is an economic giant but a political dwarf got a new meaning in February 2022. What we currently see is nothing less than the emergence of a new order in Europe and beyond. If we Europeans want a place in it, it is high time for a change. Thank you.